In Section 2, we will continue speaking about rooms at the fort as well as the reason the Hudson's Bay Company created an outpost several hundred miles from contemporary civilization. This room, one of our last visits to the fort on February 2nd, was the carpenter's room. Many pieces of furniture in the homes themselves had to be built on site because it was impractical to ship or move them over long distances. So why did the Hudson's Bay Company travel into the vast wilderness? Because they were in the fur trading business and they needed to go where they could find beaver, otter, and other valuable pelts. But don't take my word for it. Let's ask Francois. And I am an employee for the Hudson Bay Company. And today I'm going to tell you how to trap the beaver. And you can going to go back in time with me to the year 1830 when the Oregon Territory was just the French Canadians and the Indian people. This is a hive of the beaver. Now, what we do is we, when we trap the beaver, we skin them out in the field here, and then we, uh, we take them and we tie them up into a loop and we let them dry. Um, this is a very good sized beaver here. <laughs> now, this is how I make my living, you know. I, just, I uh, trap the beaver and I take them up to Fort Vancouver. Fort Vancouver is about, uh, what did you say, 80, 80 miles from here. And uh, we stack the beaver maybe about 40 or 50 beaver in a pile, which is called a bale. And then we take this bale and we put it on the canoe or on the horses and we transport it back to the fort. To set the trap, let me move this hide out of the way. Now, this, is, this trap I'm setting here today is not the drowning trap in the deep water. I'm just going to set this one right here because I know the beaver likes to come through the through a little hole right down here through the little channel he's built and he comes into this little pond area here. And I know he's walking around in here, so I'm going to set this right in here, probably right in here, just so fairly close, just barely under the water here. Now, of course, I need to secure it, so I'm going to take and drive this, drive this into the mud. Now, every trapper in his belt, he carries with them a little bottle, a little wooden bottle like this one, and inside it is caster. Caster is the... Uh, is the, down by the tail of the beaver is a gland in the beaver, a little oil sac. And you cut, when you skin the beaver and you take out the meat, you take out this little gland and you put it, uh, you put it in a bottle and you squish it up. And this is what's going to lure the beaver to the trap. So what I am doing here is I, I take this little stick right here that he's been chewing on and I wipe, wipe this, this castorum, this is castor, the uh, castorum from the beaver, and I put it on the stick, this is the lure, and I put it right here over by the trap, right? So now, the beaver for sure is going to come here. He will smell this from a quarter mile away, he will come to there. Now, <clears throat> when you are trapping the beaver, you want to make sure you not use the castorum of the, from the same pond or the same area. You want to get it from a different area. Uh, traveling back in time with me, to the year 1830 in the Oregon Territory, and I hope you subscribe to my channel. According to the National Park Service, the fur pelts were traded for rifles, tobacco, blankets, beads, thimbles, and other miscellaneous tools or items. The Native Americans often decorated their clothing with the beads and thimbles. Tom Holloway provides an example of the profit to be made when he speaks of a trapper wanting a point blanket. The trapper brought in a prime beaver pelt worth 10 shillings for which the trader traded him a three-point blanket worth 10 shillings, but the company paid just 6 shillings, 8 cents for the blanket, and added 50% to its cost to come up with a 10 shilling trade value. According to Holloway, the Hudson's Bay Company made money at both ends on the trade by which it acquired pelts and on the sale of those pelts to the brokers who sold them to hat makers.